The Weak Spot by John Lawson. Mr. Lax, dear. Yes, Dan. Hello, finish the studio. Daniel, how are you, my boy? Oh, hello, Pyrus. <laughs> Not an awfully overwhelming greeting, dear boy. Do I call it an inconvenient moment? Well, you could have... Let me see, you were, um... The coaching one of your charming young ladies in the art of the provocative pose for one of your undoubtedly admirable photographs. Mm, something like that. Well, tuck your shirt tail back in, dear. Pyrus has other work for you. Oh? I have a client who's expressed a sudden need for a motor vehicle. Wheels. There's a blue family saloon about two or three months old. Run in, unmarked, of course. Uh, by Friday morning? Friday morning? Right, I'll drive down Thursday night. Of course. You'll leave it at the seventh parking meter from the south corner of York Street and Patton Street. York and Patton. Uh, southwest, too. Uh-huh. Uh, you should be able to catch the nine o'clock train back. Oh. How are things in Glasgow these days? Apart from your normal activities, I mean. Oh, very quiet, Pyrus, and you? Oh, kept busy, dear boy, kept busy. Goodbye. Bye. <sighs> right, Fiona, that'll have to do for now. But we'd only just started, Dan. Yes, something's come up. Oh, well. Okay, while you're here, we'll take another few. Right, sit still. Right, lift your head up. Look at the camera, but turn your head round to the right. Catch more like that. That's better. That's lovely. I just hold up. Holy good. Ah. Now, just stay there. More round to me. Lovely. Ah. Well, now, maybe just a few more. Of course, Mrs. Stratford, just you call in for another checkbook any time at your convenience. No, 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 not, not Saturdays. For how you know, Mrs. Stratford, staff problems, powers of peace, powers of peace. Quite so, quite so. Thank you, Mrs. Stratford, thank you for calling. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Yes, Mr. McCallum. Yes, Mr. McCallum. Um, Mrs. Stratford's lost a checkbook. Again? It's not for the bank to criticize its customers, Dennis. If Mrs. Stratford is less than careful, we must be doubly so. You know what to do? Yes, Mr. McCallum. I'll put a stop check notice in Mrs. Stratford's account. Good. That's all, Dennis. Thank you, Mr. McCallum. And close the door after you, Dennis. There's a lot to do, a lot to do. Yes, Mr. McCallum. Mm-hmm. Now. Yes. <clears throat> but Mark the rustic haggis fed, the trembling of resounds his tread. Clap in his willy knee a blade, he'll make it whistle. And legs and arms and heads will sned like taps of thistle. Hmm, this one should do. Oh, come on, Bucky. Babum. Nice, nice. The tail count parts are always a cinch. You're a liar. And drunk as well. I hear that, but you would say we could nick. You're a... You're a common thief. Well, I'll wait, wait a minute. Right, whose car is it? Come on. Who's is it? It's Rick Donald. He's the manager of the hotel. And he asked a drunk like you to look after him. I'm not drunk. Ah, oh, tell me another. Now, who are you anyway? Come on, what's your name? Your name? Come on. Archie. Archie what? Fruit. 
Well, who are you? And, and if you're so sure I'm a thief, how come you're keeping on driving? First policeman we see was stopping. Oh, the game's a break. I mean, I didn't break in. The, the door wasn't locked and I haven't pinched anything. You've not lumped out that gin. Well, I mean, look, it was lying in the seat. I'll get another bottle. But nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny? <laughs> Did you see that big sign there? Where? Oh, what's up, eh? A big sign as big as this car it was. Police, it said, and you just drove right past the police station, eh? You <laughs> didn't do stop. Because you're nicking this car, aren't you? Eh? You're a bloody tea leaf yourself. Shut your face. <laughs> Yeah, hey, look, son. Just you drop me off at the next bus stop, that'll be that. Well, we can just keep it to ourselves, eh? Oh, sure, and in five minutes you'll be in the floor to uh, McDonald's there, uh, and yourself a quid or two. With me, I wouldn't agree no one. You might as well just finish that bottle. You've a fair journey in front of you. And the tank's full, too. What? Drink up and shut up. You could hurt yourself falling out of a fast car. Christine, his bed's not been slept in. Oh, dear. I hope he hasn't had an accident. Oh, a fine thing. Me trying to run a respectable boarding house. My own brother stays out all night. Maybe he met some friends, Mrs. Patterson. Oh, friends? Archie Flew's everybody's friend when he gets too much drink in him. Never done this before. Oh, he up your breakfast, Christine. No use you being late for school just because I'm drunk and full of... Maybe he'll telephone. Phone? He won't have any money to phone with. Drunk and incapable, I call it. Drunk and... Inca- He's not capable, he's sober. I'll get my coat. Where are you going? Well, I'll call in and see Bill Clark. Sergeant Clark. Maybe he is actually sleeping it off in a cell. Shame of it. Shouldn't you give him a chance, Mrs. Patterson? I mean, he may turn up at any moment. Oh, I'll turn him up when he gets home. Oh. Oh, well, maybe you're right, Christine. Finish your breakfast, you'll be late. Hey, here you. Well, what did you leave me in the motor for myself? You were out cold. And the doors were locked. You couldn't fall out. Well, listen, I get hungry too, you know. Transport cafe. Still, these chips look good. Did you lock the door after you? Ugh, I'm no daft. But you, are you worried somebody knocks it like? Sit down. Give me one good reason why I should feed you. I'll give you 27. Nine, nine, nine. Uh, miss. Yes? Same again for my grandfather here. Right. Here, listen, what do I call you? Dan. Well, where are we going, Dan? London. Because if that's the case, you'll have to give me my fare back. Look, up. I'll drop you off about seven o'clock, some quiet place near the station. Oh, look, it's winter out there, man. Oh, I'll freeze to death. Take the car, Rug. This thing's a gin anyway. Get your fingers out of there. Well, that's a good bit of sausage. Is it? Is this your regular line, necking cars? No, I'm on holiday. Taking time off from being a mad strangler. You keep this up. I'll get back to work early. Huh. Well, you see, the reason I asked is, if you get any contacts in the, uh, <clears throat> the thieving line, well, uh, I've got an idea. Well, well, Archie. One man burglar's advice bureau. Well, listen, I'm serious. I've got a bit of information that could be worth a bundle. Uh, properly handled. Is that so? Here you are, love. Uh, thanks, Ed. Anything else? Uh, coffee, please. Uh, tea for me, please. Right. Mark you, it would have to be done properly. Uh, what would? Well, this job I know of it. I'm saying it would have to be done properly. Of course. Well, someone with your talent for feeling door handles and getting driven off hiding on the floor, well, you would want everything done just right. Uh, <laughs> meat's a bit grizzly, isn't it? Listen, I'll tell you something, Daddy boy. You should have checked the back seat before you drove off, that's what. 
What is this information, then? Well, there's no much to tell, really. <coughs> Quite simple. It's just that I know a bank where I can get in at any time of the day or night. Got a spare key? No key, no. But I can get into it. And not through a, a, a door or a window or a skylight or a trap door. <laughs> <sighs> that wasn't bad. Right, let's get going. Hey, wait, wait a minute, I haven't had my tea yet. And, and, and how about a fag? You wouldn't like a double brandy while you're at it. Oh, and just please get a license. Hello? Hello, pirates? Daniel. Something wrong? Not at all, Pirates. No snags whatsoever. Why the telephone call, dear boy? Uh, the car? Delivered. Keys in the boot as usual. Well, you should be on the train by now, accumulating those dear little bottles provided by British Railway. I have someone I want you to meet, Pirates. Well, you know, dear boy, any friend of yours and all that. But at the moment, my social calendar is full. This friend belongs more in the financial column, not the social. Oh? Think of a bank in a smallish town. Local shops, traders, good business, steady stream of cloth caps and soft hats. Plumbers, grocers, butchers. How much cash would that kind of bank hold on a fat night? I am a teeny bit intrigued, dear boy. I think I know a way into that bank, pirates. A bank? We are ambitious. Uh, we are interested. Uh, strong locks, burglar alarms and bells and things notwithstanding. Uh, not, as you say, withstanding. Uh-huh. Come and meet my new friend, Pyrus. You are such a good judge of character. Corruptible character. That's the best kind. Uh, you know my reluctance to uh, expose <laughs> myself unnecessarily <laughs> to unfamiliar germs, Daniel. That's all right. The park... In ten minutes? Uh, fifteen, I think. A leisurely stroll in the park, not a headlong sprint. Have you ever sprinted, Pyrus? I trust I shall never have to, dear boy. Uh, fifteen minutes, then? Well, where are we meeting this friend of yours? Now, uh, let's have a seat on that bench, Archie. Uh, Here, listen, are you sure you can trust them? I mean, this kind of thing needs organisation. You can't get one Archie, bite will you? Uh, you got a fag? Later. It's time now. Here, look, look, look. What's the scarf for? Don't tempt me. Eh? We'll put it over your eyes instead. Well, what's all this about? My now? friend wants to hear your story first before he makes up his mind, and he's a bit fussy about who sees him. Sit still. It's only a blindfold. <laughs> Blind man's flaming buff. Games in the park. You play your game right, Archie boy, and you'll get lots of pennies. Diver. How did I know him? Shut up, Archie. According to you, you're the only man in the world who knows how this job can be worked. You're losing nothing. Too late as a fag. I read somewhere you only enjoy smoke properly when you can see it, and you can't see a damn thing. Talk now, smoke later. Is he here yet? He's listening. <laughs> Behind is a bed. Creeping up in the grass. Get going, Archie. Right. Eh, eh, where, where do I start? From the beginning. Oh. Uh, right. Well, I, I was working with this firm of contractors, uh, Angus Duff, as they're called. I was labouring about, you know, helping the brickies, anything that needed done. You know, I can turn my hand to most things, you see. Eh, is he listening? Go on. Well, in the name of Social Security, did you find him, dear boy? It was, is, is that rain, I feel? No, it is not raining, Archie. Keep going. Well, it was about three years ago, you see, that Willie Grant, he was saying he was coming down with the flu. He was the bricky on the job. Well, man, his face was as white as a, a lemon sole, you see. But then he turned around with the foreman just that week, and so the foreman said he was malingering. Well, nobody would believe him. So I told Wally, I'll wait him and I'll cover for you for the rest of the afternoon. And you still there? Mm, go on. This is daft sitting here talking to my bloody self. You're not. He's listening, I promise you. With considerable awe. 
Well, did Big Show the foreman no come up and ask where Molly was, you see? Well, I tell him he'd gone back to the, to the yard because his trowel had broke, see? And Big Show said the bricking had better be finished that night or Molly was for the heat. Uh, uh, what was the job, Archie? Eh? Well, it was this bank. Anyhow, they'd put in a new night safe and we were filling up an old door. There wasn't much to finish, so I started filling it in. And then I found that there wasn't much cement left. But if I went back to the yard and got more cement, they would rumble that, well, it had gone off, you see. So I shoved a whole lot of sand into what there was in the cement and used that to fill up the rest of the hole. Uh, d- 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 explain about the cement, Archie. Eh? Oh, is he, is he still there? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you see, when you're doing an outside wall... You need one part of cement to about three or four of sand. And then, you see, it sets like a stone. But the more sand you put in it, the weaker it gets. <laughs> and I put in an awful lot of sand, see? I had to. So the bricks you laid... Aye, well, but bricks and, and concrete blocks, you see? I was running out of them, too. Well, they're just sitting there. An angry mouse could push them in if he knew where to push. What happened after that? Well, Molly came back the next morning. He said, well, he said it was the flu after all, just a bad beer. And he finished it off. And once the joiners and the painters were finished, there was nothing to see. Well, that, that bit of wall, it, it's on the lane, you see, and it's rough cast. Well, it's just a rough cast that's holding my bit together. How big is uh, your bit? Well, big enough. Big enough for what? Oh, God, he really wants to spell through it, doesn't he? Well, it's big enough for someone to climb in. If he knew where. And the inside wall? Nothing shown there. You see, all you'd have to do is, is cut your way in through that, of course, but that's no trouble. I mean, keyhole saw and... Uh... Right. Yeah, are you still there, Dan? Archie, I want you to sit here and count up to 50. Uh, then take off the scarf and go back to the pub we were in before we came to the park. Have you got that? I. All right, but all that talking's giving me a right thirsty. Oh, there's a note in your pocket. Well, so there is. I can't think. Oh, One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> So you see, my dear, the plum just fell into my lap. Most gratifying. <laughs> Someone up there must be looking after Athelstan Barbus. Who is looking after me? Such a pleasure, Michaela. <laughs> Such a pleasure. But we must take it step by step. I am prepared to invest a considerable amount in this one. It is potentially a... more champagne, my dear. Thank you. So it will take us a little time to prepare the ground... Adjust the necessary companies, open the appropriate accounts. The commercial bank has some widely scattered branches, I'm happy to say, but you should have no trouble finding them, my dear. Oh, remember, darling, I want to change. Mm. Well, of course. The bright butterfly into the dull moth. Mm-hmm. So we shall linger here for another half hour. Your flight north is not until after ten. What a beautiful asset you are, to be sure, my dear. <laughs> From you, Wasselstein, that is a beautiful compliment. <laughs> do you know, my dear, mm. I, I do believe I could trundle around the floor with my research expert. Shall we dance? will be looking at the clock. But she's your landlady, not your mother. Besides, you're over 21. So you keep telling me. Well. well you make me sound like the older woman sometimes. Miss Seawalsh, school teacher and spinster of this parish, the well known baby snatcher. <laughs> you're only two months younger than me, you know. Well, it is a consideration. Oh, come here, ancient crone. Mm. <laughs> Oh, good night, Dennis. Oh, well, good night. What about tomorrow? I thought you said there was something on the radio tomorrow night. Oh, yes. What is it? 
Well, it's a talk on the fortifications of the Iron Age. Mm. Half past eight, I think. Funny. Now, quietly. Good night. Good night. Oh! <laughs> Did I hear something outside? Oh, just Christian's boyfriend. Oh, look at a nice enough boy, Mrs. Delbert. Clumsy as a puppy. That was him falling over the dustbin. The other night he scattered the milk bottles. He even got tangled in the thorns of the rambler once. Christine had to come in for the torch and the scissors. Poor boy. Some men are so awkward. <laughs> How do they do? When this show's over, I'll put the kettle on. I heard that, Mrs. Bassett. Oh, hello, Christine. Hello, Mrs. Dyer. Hello, dear. I'll get the kettle. Sorry about the bin. What's this bloke's name? You don't need to know that. Well, I like to know who you're working for. You don't give a damn who you're working for as long as you get paid. Anyway, you're working for me, Archie. I hired you like I hired this cab. Have you worked for him before, then? Well, then. I mean, can we trust him, Dad? Trust him? This is business. As long as the cake sliced right and we all get a bit. I how much she think we'll get? Look, Archie. Ah, I might as well tell you. I've got a nickname for him. I call him the Paper Man, and it's up to him. If he thinks your little hole in the wall can pay off, you can take it from me. We'll come out of it all right. <laughs> the Paper Man? Well, that's a right funny name. Is he a sort of master criminal, then? The brain? He delivers. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people. I've got a lot of fingers and a lot of pies. And he puts the bill. If anyone can use your sandy cement, the Paper Man can. Oh, here, there's something I forgot to tell you. What's that? But the bank, you know, the, the one we were talking about. Well, it, it, it'll be closing up. What? We saw these mergers and things. You see, the same bank owns two branches in the town now, and they'll be closing one of them soon. Well, the story goes it'll be ours. Is there anything else you've forgotten? Eh... Uh, I what about expenses? If and when you have any expenses, you just let me know. But not until the job is on. If it's on. Right now, you've got your fair home and a bit extra. Aye. You know, I've always wanted to travel first class. You'll go second class, you stupid lump, and like it. <gasps> you and I go first class, and the whole town will have a story. Go home and sit tight. I'll be in touch. If you have to tell them you met an old friend and went on the binge, they'll believe that. Forget this bit. Fair foyer on his sunsy face, great shift in all the pudding race. A bin the more you got your place, pains, tripe, or them. Will are you worthy of a grace as long as my am? All I can say is you're lucky you didn't crawl home to find your room taken. I did not crawl. I was stone cold. You wouldn't leave my room, would you, Elsie? As it happens, a lady crawled. And I've given her the room at the end of the passage. Well away from your drunken snoring. I told you I was not drunk. Where were you then? Well, I told you I met an old friend who I haven't seen for years. They asked me to stay, so I did. Huh? Anyway, I don't have to explain to you. I'm over 21, you know. I know. Twice over it. Hmm. Who's your new lodger then? She's a... <clears throat> if I told you once, I've told you a hundred times. They're guests. And you can dry the dishes instead of standing there with your hands in your pockets. Right. Well, who is your new guest, then? A very nice lady. She likes budgies, too. Nice. Mrs. Dow's her name. Nice. And she's doing an awful nice thing. Oh. Before she lost her husband, they spent a holiday touring up this way. 
and she's now retracing their footsteps. Oh, not in a morbid way. It's a blessed release. A nice, sentimental journey. Such a gentle, quiet woman. How long is she staying? Oh, just for a few days. And you mind your manners. Uh, she's not a rich widow by any chance. No, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Elsie. I have an appropriate title for this project, Daniel. I think you'll like it. Huh? Operation Weak Spot. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> uh, I should like you to look at these. Uh, Department of the Environment. Yes, the official letterhead. Mm -hmm. I particularly like the motto on the crest, in defense. Yes. <laughs> now, you are a photographer who has been contracted to take pictures of various interesting buildings in the town in connection with a preliminary survey being carried out by the department. Nice, nice. Mm. Uh, this uh, is a letter confirming the request with a list of the buildings you're expected to photograph. Mm. Donald McIntosh. That's me. Indeed. As is customary practice in government departments, the signature is illegible, <laughs> although the initials and the reference are authentic. Uh, this is actually part of the uh, statutory list of buildings of architectural or historic interest thoughtfully prepared by the authorities and available at local council offices. Uh, do I need to know about the history and things? You are an ignorant photographer, a mere tool of the cultured classes, Daniel. Oh, I'm glad of that. I have spent a considerable amount of my precious time reading about the utterly boring social life of the town. From the back copies of local newspapers, one can build up a horrifying mass of seemingly useless knowledge. <laughs> Where did you get the local papers from? Well, this country possesses the most magnificent and the most obsessive system of libraries in the world. Oh, amaze me! Oh, present at the last dinner dance at the commercial bank was a young gentleman by the name of Dennis Mal. On the committee of the town's local history society sits proudly one Dennis Mal. Dennis, our historical Dennis, is employed at the bank with the weak spot. Dennis Mal. When you arrive, endeavor to telephone the bank when the manager, Mr. McCallum, is out. Mr. Mal will answer the telephone. And the rest is up to you, Mr. McIntosh. <laughs> Then <laughs> Hong the stretch and drive. No. And um, strive. Then Hong the stretch and strive. Deal take the hindmost on the drive. Of course. <laughs> but I must buy you lunch, Mr. Man. You've been very helpful. Well, I usually go home, Mr. McIntosh. Please. I mean, I've taken up a lot of your time this morning. Of the bank's time, actually. Well, it's all in the public good. And you have told me more in a few minutes than I could have found out in hours of asking around. I simply must buy you lunch. <laughs> well, I'll have to phone home and tell Mother. I suppose you can put it in the oven for supper. Good. I ate in a very nice place yesterday near the station. And they'll have a phone. Yes, sir. You know, I don't think I've eaten in more than two or three places in the town. Oh, why should you, Mr. Marley? Your home is here. You live here. It's your town. My town? Oh, oh yes. Yes, it is. In 1789, you said the building was built. Good Lord. That's nearly two centuries. Yes, George the Third, actually. Of course, it has been substantially altered since then. Not Mrs. Patterson. They're actually going to redecorate the staff room. Oh, that's nice, Christine. Well, toast. Thank you. According to Miss MacDonald, it's the first time it's seen paint for 50 years. <laughs> Where's Mrs. Dow this morning? Well, she caught the 8 o'clock train. Oh, she had to see her late husband's lawyers in Edinburgh, and then she was going to see her husband's cousins in Stirling. Oh, but she'll be back tomorrow. That's the sugar. <sighs> See, there was an accident last night in the paper. Oh? Where? Main Street. Laurie skidded into a wall. Mm. It was frosty last night. Anyone hurt? Mm. No. Mm. Lamp post knocked over and the lorry was damaged. Substantially damaged. I can use that this morning. Get my kids to draw their version of the accident. Lots of red crayon. Nothing like lots of blood for a good accident. At the corner of Main Street and Rose Lane, it was... I must tell Dennis. Where? 
Rosaline. But that's him. Um, that's that's beside the. Oh yeah, I, I've got to go. Oh, sorry, I'll tell you, I've got to go. What? What's got into him? Up at breakfast now before nine. He must be sickening for something. It was tricky. I had to soften him up enough to get him talking. But I couldn't have him staggering back to the bank like Lee Marvin on a bad night. <laughs> Just imagine a bank teller unable to differentiate between fives and ones would be conspicuous. <laughs> he's not a teller, Pyrus. He's a clerk. Dennis is a minor executive who looks after the electric kettle and dreams of the day when he'll have his name on a door. Yeah. Anyway, I've finished with him. Have you been inside the bank? Briefly. Long enough. Here's a sketch of the interior mm -hmm. and a street plan and some pictures of the general scene. Yeah. By the way, where is the abominable archer? I told him to sit tight. Say nothing and do nothing. Now he is the weak link, Daniel. We need him, Pyrus. He still refuses to point out the weak spot, wise man. You're not wisdom, dear boy. I share primitive instinct. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is the lane, isn't mm, it? When we get in, we'll be roughly here, between the counter and the door. The door is on the main street, well lit at night, and always some traffic, and the usual police patrol on foot, and the prowl car. Uh, have you started their uh, habits? Uh, I'm going to an empty shop down the street a bit. I can get in from the back, and I've got a good pair of night glasses. The beauty of this is that we bypass the front door pies. We couldn't do it otherwise. Yeah. How, how well lit is the lane? A street light there, fairly close. Uh, narrow pavement? In the lane, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have the picture. Mm -hmm. And there's the other photo of the... Ah, uh, yeah. We go in roughly there. Uh-huh. Now, when you get in, take all the loose bricks and pieces with you. Take a hand brush and a small shovel to sweep up the pavement. We do not want anyone crunching past and wondering why. Mm, I'll take a bag to put the muck in. Now, the, uh, the hole, how wide will it be? Oh, fair hole. Big enough to climb in. I know that, dear boy. Well, I don't know what shape it'll be, if that's what you mean. Uh, it'll be very noticeable, even in a badly lit lane. You will have a large board made, painted or treated somehow to resemble the wall surface at night. Large enough to cover the hole completely and comfortably, with a handle on the inside. Ah, nice, nice. Vintage pirates. Yes, the idea is sound. The execution must be equally sound. Yeah. Hmm. A hard board, probably. Fit snugly against the wall with no shadows along the edges. And brace to keep it safe. Yeah, hmm? And some way to cover the hole after you leave. That's important, too. Yes, a prop or something. Or adhesive strips. Well, anyway, it shall be done. Well, work on it, dear boy. I think we can solve the threat of the passing eye. It is the ear of the casual public that concerns me. Well, you can muffle the hammer and chisel. And I'll bring blankets to put on the ground to catch anything heavy that slips. Yeah, the lane's narrow, fairly high building, so probably an echo when it's deserted. Now, what about the safe and the strong room? I, I've called in a man called Middleton. Uh, who I'm assured is at the top of his profession. He has experience of uh, bank furniture. Mm. Even he admits that although he can keep the noise to a minimum, there has to be a teeny explosion. Now he wants to know about the alarm system. Well, they're geared to a normal break-in through the door or the windows. A uh, big bell, buttons on the hinges of the doors, connected to a tape 999 called the local nick. Mm, not too elaborate. And once we're inside, we can climb over the grill and the counter. The, uh, the door to the manager's office? <laughs> Would you believe? It has a frosted glass top half. <laughs> we can either break it or chip out the putty. <laughs> oh, thoughtful of them. And there will be a box somewhere with a switch to turn the whole system off, but it would need a key. So you won't rely on that? Uh, well, if we're careful, we won't need to bother about it. And we are careful, dear boy. Uh, from my perusal of the local newspaper... A little light shoplifting is the height of the thieving standards in the town. That and the taking away of bicycles without the consent of the owners. A sleepy little town. Mm -hmm. Slumber on, little town. Slumber on.
Good afternoon, Mr. McIntosh. Good afternoon, Mr. Mal. I brought the box along. Ah, and that you are sure this is all right? Oh, of course, Mr. McIntosh. Just slide it across. <laughs> and I've uh, brought a list of the contents. There's no need for that, Mr. McIntosh. I'll just enter it in as contents unknown. Well, as you can see, it's just uh, prints and films and a spare camera. Just lock it up and I'll put it away, Mr. McIntosh. I'll give you a receipt. Mr. Donald McIntosh, Department of the Environment, uh, Edinburgh. And I'll call for it as soon as I can. It's a nuisance being called away like this, but whatever the urgent job is in Edinburgh, it shouldn't take all that long. You would just sign here, Mr. McIntosh. There you are. And this is your receipt. Thank you. I do appreciate this, Mr. Mao. I wouldn't want to leave this stuff in a hotel, and it's a load to carry a bag. It'll be safe with us, Mr. McIntosh. Thank you. And I won't forget you'd like some pictures of the local building. Oh, thank you. Not at all. You're helping me. It's the least I can do. Nice, nice. And they'll take all the boxes and things out of that strong room and transfer them to the other branch. Chances are there'll be a different staff working when I come back to collect... Nobody will recognize me. Just hand over the receipt. Thank you very much for your esteemed service. Thank you for your custom. Good day, sir. Hold the door open for the gentleman with the deep box full of fiber. And off into the rich blue yonder. And nobody the wiser. Not even... <laughs> <laughs> Especially not even old paper man himself. P. A. Pyrus Esquire. Right, Archie, I'm in a good mood. You may break. What? Oh, aye. 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 Well, that certainly spread them out a bit. You know, a damn near thing at once. Mm. But that, that damn worry. Ah, uh, blue, I think. You know, another six feet and it would have hit the side of the bank. And if it had hit the loose bridge, well, it would have ended up parked right on top of the counter. But it didn't, Archie. It didn't. Six and... One is seven. When you loosened it up, though, the rough cuts are cracked. Will they repair it, do you think? Oh, I doubt it. Uh, I mean, they're shutting the place at the end of the month, Dan. Uh, if, if we're removing, uh, there's not much time. Patience, Archie. Just like snooker. Oh, by the way, I'm on the black now. Size things up and then... <coughs> no mistake. Evening, dear boy. A brandy waiting for you. Hello, Pyrus. Thanks. Isn't it? All right. Oh, I've got uh, 40 minutes before the next flight back. I am for time. And I know, I have another string to add to our mutual bow. The weak spot. Yes, that particular branch is connected to a computer system. So? It has a small feeder unit through which it communicates um, transactions to head office. I see someone, ICI, mm. pay you by check and you deposit the check in the bank. The information is relayed direct to the computer at head office and ICI's account is debited. Sorry, Pius. The machine is fed data. Mm -hmm. It absorbs the data, and like an expensive and accurate but uh, unthinking bookkeeper, it spews out debits and credits into the bank's accounting records. Mm. And there's another brandy. As I expected you would, dear boy. The barman is well gift. Give me this bookkeeping thing again. But the point is, Daniel, that totally fictitious information could be fed into the computer. And it would take a little time before the fiction was discovered. Thank God for the human element, as we say. Uh, two brandy, sir. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Uh, again in five minutes, if you would. Right, you are, sir. 
I'm beginning to see. Now, if we could arrange for certain information to be fed into the computer, nothing major, just a thousand or two, thinly spread to the credit of certain widespread bank accounts over which I exert some <laughs> anonymous control. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Nice, nice. And you withdraw the cash before they find out. Something of that order there, boy. I believe one should seek to benefit from the uh, technological advances of our age. How much? Oh, nothing too ambitious. Large amounts might, well, indeed they would, arouse suspicion. There should be enough to cover our expenses, say, um, ten thousand? Mm, approximately. Split? Well, that's you and I, dear boy. <laughs> no need to complicate the lives of simpler, less astute folk. Yes, and uh, how do I work this uh, thing? Oh, we shall have to bring in an expert. It's not the kind of teach-yourself subject one can grasp in a few hours. But you happen to have an expert in mind. Yes, I too, in fact. The branch is linked to head office by telephone and involves a complicated system of numbers. Now, I have someone who can accomplish that link and a second pair of hands to ply the electronic gadgets with the necessary information. True. Listen, I'll have to come in with us. Where you can go, dear boy, others can follow. That's the risk. And to the rewards, Daniel. This computer thing, it works at night. So I believe. Computers do not slumber, but they can be switched off. And uh, switched on again by a specialist. And here's the telephone number of the telephone gentleman. Right. His name, for our purposes at least, is James. He was at one time an employee of the post office, or the GPO as it was then. And the computer bloke? I'm in process of arranging that. Right. So, five of us going. A computer man, a telephone man, Archie... Middleton is safe. But you'll meet him on the night. And me to supervise and pack the bag. <laughs> uh, how's the uh, night traffic along the street in front of the bank? Any heavy lorries? No, it's a bypass. Just private cars at night. Uh, during the day, there are lorries and vans delivering, but um, uh, nothing big after about, ooh, six o'clock. Mm. Should have liked something to cover the sound of the safe being opened. It's not a dance hall nearby, perhaps. The disco is street survey, unfortunately. But there's a hotel just across the lane, mm -hmm. and it has a restaurant on the first floor. Overlooking the bank? Yeah. And do they do what is popularly known as a function? Well, I'll find out. We're looking for a dance oh. with electric guitars or accordions and drums. Yeah, yeah. and look into it, dear boy. A sound barrier, in fact. Hmm. A drink up. We have time before your return flight to go over everything again, have we not? Mm. Fingers are the flying yo yo. As we may experience some turbulence, passengers are advised to remain in their seats with their safety belts fastened. China's muscle lines. Sorry? Well, I always think that these announcements on planes sound like Chinese muscle rhymes, sing song, soothing, and meaningless. Oh. Not that I've ever heard a Chinese nursery rhyme, but that's what I imagine it will sound like. Yes. It would have been further than Sorrento, anyway. Yeah. So it's the way to travel. Yes. <sighs> Do you want something to read? I have a brief case full of books here. <coughs> Mostly good, solid, second-year reading. You're a teacher. The schoolmaster of infinite experience. <laughs> if I had insomnia, I'd write my autobiography. Twice a year of nicotine and kids. <laughs> the master's story. The master of what, I ask you. <laughs> I teach English. Chaucer, to boys whose future reading will be restricted to the spots of the financial pages of newspapers. <laughs> that, excuse me. The one of the perks of a delayed flight is the chance to take an extra fuel to buy. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, it's an advantage not being able to tell the difference between an air pocket and a whiskey belt. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want something to read? Uh, look, uh, uh, try this. And what is it? Bands. Bammy bands. Ran ten rat. Oh. They're having a bond supper at the school, as usual this year. Haggis and orange juice. 
And it is got in church. Symbol of the Protestant Church of Scotland ethic. And the bloody bad pipes as well. An ill wind that nobody blows good, as some American put. Well, oh, there's a good one on page 72. What? Tumnock Sand. More famous for its humor than its stillness. That's right. Dear boy, careful with your words. Right, right. I think I have found a sound barrier. Ah? Uh -huh. It means fixing a date and pretty tight timing, but it looks good. Indeed. Hmm. Pirates, what do you know about haggis and neeps and champet tatties? Haggis and who did you say, dear boy? Off again tonight, eh, Christine? Yes, Mr. Frew. Actually, we're going to a lecture tonight. Oh, by the way, I hope you won't mind me mentioning it, but it'll be Mrs. Patterson's birthday soon. Oh. Oh, aye, aye. Oh, I hadn't forgotten. It's the end of January, isn't it? Uh, yes. The 26th. Aye, yes. that's right, the, the 26th it is. I yes. thought so. That's the day after Burns Night, so we won't forget it, will we? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, what's the lecture about? What? Oh, it's the local history society. Dennis is very interested in local history. Oh, I, I there are a few tales about this town. Uh, Any time you want to know anything about this place, let me know. He's particularly interested in old buildings. Now, where did I put my gloves? Buildings, eh? Oh, I don't know anything about buildings. Uh, no, not me. I thought Mrs. Patterson said you'd been in the building trade. What? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Don't listen to her. Uh, buildings. No, no, I don't know nothing about buildings. No, no, nothing at all. Oh. Well, I must get going or I'll be late. Bye, Mr. Fruit. Now, I have your letter beside me. I feel I really know your little town, darling. I miss you. And I miss you. Not long now. How are your financial arrangements? Uh, the ground has been prepared. Your Mr. Fru is nervous. He is not my Mr. Fru. Not attracting too much attention, I hope. No. He doesn't uh, suspect? Why should he, darling? Uh, just a few more days. Daniel has been told all he needs to know. Sunshine and blue water. And you... Now, call me if anything arises. Anything at all, remember? Of course, darling. Hello, this is James here. This is Dan. You got my letter? Yes. You are booked into the Royal Hotel for the night of the 24th. Good. How will you travel north? By car. Fine. Arrive when it's dark and put your car away. Someone might notice your London registration. Uh, quite. You're careful, Dan. Anything else you need? Tools? Uh, one digit to dial with, one ear to listen with, and the rest is concentration. Good. Wait until I call you at the hotel. I look forward to meeting you, Dan. Welcome to Scotland, Pyrus. <laughs> I thought you never visited the scene of the crime, before or after. This motel seems to be designed for the anonymous, Daniel. Certainly the food is. Uh, we have a monumental snag, dear boy. Oh. Middleton cannot come. But he's a safe man. Unsafe. The greedy fool. With our employment waiting for him, he chose to fill in the time with a little enterprise of his own. Oh, he got nicked. On his way home, his car skidded on the motorway. According to the picturesque account of my informant, the car rolled like an empty beer can and ended up flattened between a tanker and the concrete pillar of a bridge. No chance of him recovering in time. The question is not when Mr. Middleton will again be fit to continue his art, but rather if he will open his eyes again this year. Mm. Poor fellow. Idiot. 
He knew we were relying on him. A fool. So what do we do about the safe and the strong room? My sources advise me that we are unlikely to find another specialist like Middleton in the time left to us. Well, we've got the computer lock going for us. Oh, my dear boy, for that to succeed, at least a day must pass, and a working day at that, before the bank suspects that its electronic chastity has been interfered with. If they find a hole in the wall and the safe untouched, nothing taken, even the thickest of employees will ask, why break in at all? Hmm, I see. Well, could we fake an attempted safe break? What do you mean, leave jet ignite and fuses and things like that? Oh, I don't know a thing about explosives, and I don't much fancy climbing into that place with my pockets full of jelly. Mm, quite. And there's scarcely time to send you to night school in Belfast. Now, let me see your sketches and pictures again. No, man. It'll come to her, too. <laughs> Oh, they don't make cream cakes like they used to. Mm. But these polyunsaturates. Mm, no, it's a cows. Not the same. It's cholesterol. That's the trouble. They look the same. Brown and white, black and white. All oh, swishing tails and things. And the sodium glutamate. The inside milk machines. This milk machine, no character. Cows today. I didn't know you ever lived in the country. Do you want that one with the cherry? No, you have it. I'll try that chocolate. Daniel, what in God's name is this place? Uh, there's a table by the window. Only in the name of art would I be seen dead in this post-menopausal canteen. Come on. <laughs> Soon again. <laughs> My apologies, madam. Yes, sir. Daniel, do realize that I would be less conspicuous standing stark naked in the refectory of a nunnery. It was your idea to come, Pyrus. You said you wanted to see the layout for yourself. Yes. Ah, no, I, I should like some Russian tea with fresh lemon and a little clarified honey. Not sugar, do you understand? Eh? Two teas, please, miss. Miss Gisler, are you Oh, God forbid. No, no thank you. Oh, thank the Lord I have my cognac with me. Uh -huh. Flash that silver flask of yours, Pyrus, and you'll be remembered here for the rest of the year. Oh. Look out the window. Take your mind off it. You see that building across the lane? Do you know it is Georgian? Built, yes, built in 1789. Poor devil, see him out trash, as feckless as a withered rash, his spindle shank against whip lash. You're in time, Danny. I followed your bus. Was it another side? You weren't supposed to. I saw you get on. Where are we going, Dan? To meet a few friends. Oh, is this what they call a briefing? You watch too much television. Uh, you'll, you'll give me a lift back to town after, eh? You see, these buses are so few and far between. If you weren't here this afternoon, where would you usually be? Well, at the pub, maybe, till half past two. And then maybe over to the bookies, see the boys. They won't miss you at the betting shop. Uh, no, no, I come and go, you see. And what after that? Well, home for my tea. Never miss it? Well, sometimes. Uh, sometimes I go back to the pub at opening time. Depends on the DJs, you see. So if you didn't turn up this evening, your sister won't be surprised. <laughs> no. You put all this about, Dan. Uh, I'm keeping you under my wing for the rest of the day, Archie, my boy, that's all. What? It's here, it's not. You mean, you mean it's tonight? We're in business. Oh, but, but, hey, I, I didn't, uh, but, but what, what about my tools? All laid on. We've got everything we need. Well, what need to eat? We won't starve. But where are we going, Dan? But, I mean, no. Just sit back and enjoy the run. Or sit forward and enjoy the run. Or don't enjoy it. But shut up. Here's who's that? Sit still. Aaron James. Here, Dan. Who's he? James, 
This is Archie. How are you doing, Archie? Well, what are you for? Charming. It's smoky in here, Dan. Do you mind if I open the window? Uh, let me do it, James. I don't want you seen at the window. Anyway, we'll pull the curtain soon. Dark in half an hour. You listen, is that hair oil I smell? It's aftershave, actually. What? Do you shave in the afternoon? Well, twice a day, actually, with my growth. No, no, my God, Dan, what is he for? I'll put it another way, Dan. What on earth is he for? Archie gets us in, James. He is our guide dog. Oh, woof, woof. Oh, no, just a minute, you. Shut up, Archie, and make yourself useful. There's coffee in those flasks and sandwiches in the box. You fill your mouth and you keep quiet. Aye, uh, right. Who are we waiting for, Dan? Mike. But who's he? You'll find out. We'll go through the whole bit when we're all here. And not just once. Do you have any problems, James? And none. After you called me this morning, I spent some time in a call box. I spoke to a contact in the phone game. My information is still up to date. Good. Yeah, listen, what do you do? Even with his mouth full of what looks like salmon sandwiches, he still makes a noise, Dan. Look, I want you to know, Dan. Dan, you spill coffee all down your front. Who's that now? Just a minute. Good evening, Mike. Uh, Mike, this is James. How do you do, James? How do you do, Mike? And this is Archie. Afternoon, Mr. Drew. Hi, uh, hello. You listen, uh, don't I know you? Hmm? Uh, well, you see, I know your face, but, uh, you're done. What's he for? Uh, time to pull the curtains on it. Good. I'll be glad to get these off. Yeah, let me take a coat. Well, here, listen, see me take your buddy. <laughs> Oh, my God, that's very <laughs> good. Now, I thought you were female. I have an awareness about such things. But you're... you're a a grey wig, spectacles, and a skirt below my knees. Mr. Fru. Mrs. Doe. <laughs> my God, it's a wonder woman. But, uh, but... Uh, now, I don't quite understand this, Dan, but at least Mike has managed to do what we could not. Silence Archie. Now, Mike's a specialist too, James. Computers. Oh. Now, let's get down to it, shall we? Step. By step. Mm, good gloves, Dan. Surgical rubber, no less. <laughs> Keep your lily white hands nice and clean. We hey, all wear gloves, Archie. But the bricks will wear a hole in them in the first minute. So wear these for the heavy work. Ah, ah now that's better. Good, thick stuff. They suit you. I'll need light to work by inside, Daniel. Here, try this hat on. What on earth? It looks like a miner's lamp. Yeah, something like. <laughs> and we'll be taking a big, heavy blanket to drape over you and the machine. Yes, It'll be a bit warm, but uh, we can't have any spare light spraying about. Sit on the floor, Archie. What? Go on. Sit on the floor. Beside that chair. Yeah, but what for? Go on! Right. <sighs> now. This is the shutter. Now reach over the chair. <coughs> Pretend you're leaning through the hole. And get hold of the handle of the shutter. That's right. it. Good. Now, pull it upright against the chair. Splendid. It's not too heavy. Archie's a big, strong man. Okay, Archie, you got a hang of it. I, uh, I, uh, there. How's that? Fine. That's good. That's easy. Hey, look. I can even hold out with one hand. Oh. Both hands, Archie. And all the time. Right. Now, that is the exact colour and texture of the wall from three feet. Nobody will look twice at it. No loose change in the pockets. No rattling boxes of matches. Better not take your handbag, James. When you're swinging that hammer, Archie, remember to keep your head in the way. I'll cut it out, you two. Rubber soles, dark clothes. And we've got a black sweater for you, Archie. We picked it out specially. And gloves on all the time. As soon as I'm on the telephone, Dan, if there's a recorded 999 device from the bank to the police, my call blocks it. I may have to hang up and try again several times, so it'd be a good idea to tie back the telephone bell while I'm working. I, 
I thought there was supposed to be a bloke coming to blow the safe. We have made alternative arrangements, Archie. Oh, aye. We're taking a tin opener, are you? No. A fish. Well, normally, this man makes his living at auction rooms and dog tracks and similar gatherings of well-filled pockets. He's known professionally as the fish, from those loathsome objects called fish fingers. He's extremely expensive, dear boy, and we had to tempt him from his usual habitat and at short notice. But we're not in a position to haggle, are we, dear boy? North Street Police Station. Well, hello. Is that the police? Ah, it's the police station. The bank. Someone's at the bank. Uh, could I have your name, please, sir? No, never mind my name. It's not your name. Someone's at the bank. The bank on Main Street. Sir, there are four banks on Main Street. No! Rather. Well, is um, the commercial bank. Yes, a commercial. Well, what about it? My God, I just told you. There's someone at it, you know? At it. At look, the bank. look, sir, if you could just give me an... <sighs> what was that all about, Briggs? That sounded like a drunk surge. Something about the commercial bank on Main Street. Uh, it didn't make much sense. Hmm. Well, it's a quiet night. Take a walk around and see what you can see. All right, Sarge. Who's the keyholder? McCallum is the manager. Hey, but don't bother him. Just have a look. I'll get it. North Street Police Station. Hello, police. I have just seen some men on the main street behaving most suspiciously than they were. I see, madam. Uh, could I have your name and address, please? Miss Helen Richardson, 17 Carlton Crescent. Huh? Carlton Crescent. Be behaving most suspiciously. A group of men just near the commercial bank on Main Street. Thank you, Miss Richardson. Thank you very much. We'll look into it. There was something most suspicious about them. Thank you, madam. Briggs? Uh, hold on. We'll take the car. <laughs> They fell for it. Ah, that should do it then. <laughs> How long do you think? Oh, by the time they pick Callum up at the hotel, try to move his keys and back to the bank. Oh, good half hour, I should think. I'll drop to you at the other car meanwhile. And I can keep James and Archie from eating each other. <laughs> yes. Listen, do you think they'll check on Miss Richardson? Oh, I doubt it, Daniel. She's definitely away from home anyway. I checked on Mrs. Patterson's boarding house gossip. Well, now it's all up to our pickpocket friend. But... And let's go over it again, Fish. We've got time. Uh, uh, Dada Lane. It is the hotel by the side door. There's a staircase just inside. I go up there. There's a ladder at the top of the stairs. I go in the lab and lock the door. Wait for you. Okay, at least I'll have somewhere to sit. <laughs> All right. Okay, and then I come in. Get out, I go. Uh, this man comes into the hotel. He's wearing a kilt, a raincoat. He's red faced, um, starched with glasses. He comes up the stairs. And I go down the stairs. Uh, starting drunk. Uh, the keys are in a leather holder. Probably uh, in his right hand pocket. For the kilt, he doesn't have trouser pockets. Well, if he's got a bit of spur and I'm in dead trouble, I never did the spur. Why don't you give it? Well, I'll see him for a lie, like, yeah, block the stairs and pest room. Uh, when I've got the keys, I'll say, enjoy your supper. And if you don't get them? I dare say, hope your haggis is okay. No, I've wait. I let him go up the stairs. And that's the way I get paid. Right. Supper, you've got them. Haggis, you haven't. I'll go out the door. Wait for you. You get a piece, or you don't. Either way, I'm on that nine o'clock. Bust out. Right. Right. 
if I don't get them, you're waiting for him in your car. No, I don't want to know about that bit. I'm not fussy about that bit myself. Sorry to drag you away like this, Angus. Oh, duty calls, Bill, duty calls. Besides, they, they can't start without the address to the haggis, can they? <laughs> uh, good evening, Constable Briggs. Hi, uh, evening, sir. Shall I go in first? The alarm, Briggs. Mr. McCallum has to turn it off. Oh, oh I... It won't be a moment. Waking up, Briggs. If you'd been barging in there, you'd have set off a bloody police call. Sorry, sir. Come in now, Bill. Ah, there you are. the light. Quick look round the public office. Into the back. The manager's office. Check the windows. The safe. The strong room. Shake of the head. All clear. False alarm. Smile still. You can't be too careful. And out again. But Callum will be keen to get back to the hotel. Mike. I'm off, Mike. And Archie... Don't you move till Mike tells you. All right, James? Fine, then. I wish to God I knew what she's up to. Up, well, Angus, false alarm. Still, we can't be too careful. No, it didn't take long, Bill. <laughs> Good night. Hey, Angus, your keys. Yeah? Oh, this is safe enough for me, Bill. Good night. Good night. Whitefish. He's on his way. He's a kite. Oh, that's my little brother. I fall The great man, Robbie. What? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a great man. Give me a light, please. I'm afraid I'm in rather a rush. I shall brothers be for all that. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Well, here you are. Oh, 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 Steady, old man. Steady. So I should have a distress. There you are. There you are. That's it. A great man. Very much. Indeed he was. Thank you very much. Thank you. Not at all. Are you coming to lunch dinner? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you enjoy your supper. Oh, for God's sake, Archie, not yet. But, uh, I'm just loosening the rough cast. No. No, not yet. Look, the, the making up there didn't... They'll you? make more yet. The curtain's drawn. No one will notice I open the window. Here, what if somebody looks out? Get ready. Clear both ways. Go, Archie. And got it now. Just about here. Oh, here. Feel that now. Keep going, Archie. I'll catch something. Uh, damn it, there's coming. That's damn near pure sand that has. Uh, catch it, Dan. Got it. Oh, oh no, damn you. Push them in, Archie. Never mind if they fall down inside. I don't know what one says to a bagpiper, but more wind to your bag, whoever you are. That's it. Dan's waving. Come on, James. Of Scotland once nay skinkin' wear the jocks and luggies. But if you wish her great for prayer, gee her a haggis. <laughs> Right, thanks. Right, Archie. 
pull the rope now. Right. Oh, it's coming. It's, it's like a drawbridge, isn't it? Right, I've got the handle. It's working beautifully, Dan. Congratulations. Right, got it, Archie? Aye. Hold it firm against the hole. Are you sure it's all right outside? The pavement's clean, and that shutter is an exact match to the wall. Well, we're in, folks. It makes up comfortable, Archie, and hold it exactly as it is. Aye. Right. Right, James? I'll get the alarm. You wait here. Listen, how long would you like to be? Not long, Archie. You're doing fine. Okay. This way. James, phone's on the desk. Mike, the machine. Right. They've taken out the plug, Dan. Where's the socket? S swing your torch round the skirting. There it is. Do you need light, James? Uh, there's enough. Here goes. Wait, James. The bell. Sorry, Dan. Go and find it. Right. You okay, Mike? Yes. Yes, it's on. Give me the hat, Daniel. Right. Mm. And the blanket. Right. <sighs> Daniel, it's a different kind. The machine. I, I'll have to look it over. Get your tight, Mike. Right, try the light. Okay, not a chink. Here we go. And try and keep it as quiet as you can. I'm for the safe in the strong room. You darn... Oh, darn... Shut up, Archie. I'm coming. What is it, man? Oh, darn, I'm glad you're here. Keep the shutter closed, my ear. Here, listen, this shutter thing, uh, is it painted in watercolors? Why? Well, a wee dog just came along and... What cocked his leg? Maybe the paint will run. Archie, I swear. Now, you just keep it tight and snug against the hole, will you? Oh, my God, it's the alarm. It's not the alarm. It's switched off. Oh, it's it's James on the phone. It's a hell of a noise, anyway. It just sounds loud to you. No one will hear it. But keep that hole closed, will you? And your mouth while you're at it. All right now, James? That's it, Mike. We're through. Connected. Under you go. As Pius would say, Muffin the Luca, dear boy. Donald Macintosh, Department of the Environment. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mahon. I've tried Miss Richardson three times, Sarge. There's no reply. Mm. Take the car, Briggs. Go over to Carlton Crescent. Try her house. If she isn't in, try the neighbours. You think somebody gave her name, Sarge? I'm sure they did, but I don't know why. And how did they know she wouldn't be at home? Everything as we found it? The telephone is. The plug's out and the cover's back on the machine. All doors shut. Right. You first, James. Archie, roll away slowly. Please let me have a look first. Right, James. I'll hand you a bag once you're out. Me next. Mike next. Yeah. I'll give you a mic. Good. And a bag. Yeah. Right, off you go, you two. Me now. Let them get clear, Archie. There's no rush. Look, I want out of here. Will you let go? Where are your gloves? The heavy ones. Oh, we can leave them behind. You stupid idiot. Your prints will be all over them on the outside. Oh, oh, I stuff them into your pocket. Right, now go. Once you're through, leave a bag to carry. A pleasure. Right, Dan. Okay. Here. Here. Dan. Dan, the car. What car? Our car. What about it? And keep your voice down. Somebody's parked right in front of it. It's boxed in. Keep the never get down, Archie. We'll leave it at home. How will we get on? We've got spare wheels, Archie. Don't you worry. 
just means a wee walk, that's all. But let's grab this bag and walk up the lane slowly. Find a doorway and wait for me. I have the alarm to switch on again. Somebody will see me. I can't walk with that bag. Somebody will see me. Oh, right. Go across the lane and wait inside the hotel door. On you go. Now. Easy now, Archie, man. Just take it easy. I say, you don't happen to have seen a set of keys, do you? What? What? Oh, no. I, I must have... Uh, no. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Excuse me. He's, he's, he's looking for keys. Uh, what? Keys. Uh-uh. Well, I seem to have mislaid some rather important keys. Keys, eh? Uh, a bunch of keys in a black leather key holder. Huh? What? Yes. Yes. How, how did you know? Were they there? My goodness. Yes. yes they, these are mine. But well, this is your lucky night. I was walking along the lane, and I saw something gleaming in the gutter. Oh, and, uh, thank you. I must have dropped them. Ah, I was going to phone the police and report it. Uh, they look rather important. Shop keys, were they? They're rather more important, I see. They belong to the bank. The bank? Well, uh, I mean, sir... Nothing personal, but uh, how do I know you should get them? I mean, uh, wouldn't it be proper if we went to the police and got an official... Oh, oh, no, 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 no need for that, really. I mean, I don't... I don't but here, here's my driver's license. My name's McCallum, Angus McCallum. I'm the manager of the bank. Yeah, everybody knows me. I mean, they don't... someone discovered our visit to the bank too early. So we are travelling without the goods. I bet Dan's got the cash in his car. He'll... No, he won't, Mr. Froome. And uh, don't worry about your remuneration for the evening. I have that right here. Oh. But, but suppose Dan gets stopped. Cool was the word you used for Dan, wasn't it? Dan is not driving tonight. He will go back to his hotel, leaving his car parked in the public car park overnight. With the proceeds of your week spot in the boot. Locked, of course. I can't trust anyone these days. Oh, shit. And when he thinks all is clear, he'll drive south. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You're, you're going the wrong way. I live at the other end of town. Uh, no, Mr. Frew. You didn't think we'd leave you to toddle off to your little thatched cottage with a fistful of notes in your mouth hanging over. But uh, I, I thought... Dan that, uh, has booked you into a nice wee pub, he knows, off the motorway. You drink yourself stupid there. With your accent, no one will understand a word you say anyway. And you said yourself, nobody will miss you. I bet uh, Even if you happen to fall out of a fast car at this time of night, so keep quiet. Think of the money. He's not come home yet, Archie. Well, I shouldn't worry, Mrs. Patterson. Well, it's awful late. Yes, but he has been late before. Oh, but this time, not this late, Christine. Oh, I know he's awful sometimes, but look at the time. He'll be home any minute. Oh, I think I'll just check his room again. No. Well... Yeah. What's this? What? Is his old suitcase? What's that doing out? I don't like the look of that. Look, give me a hand, Christine. We'll put it on the bed. Oh, should we, Mrs. Oh, Carter? Of course we should. It's my house, isn't it? Look at that. All his clothes. Shoes, his suit, everything. He, he, even got his picture. Picture? See, that's the team he used to play for. There he is, the front row with his arms folded the way they do. And that's Davy, my husband. He was a goalkeeper. Fine figure of a man. Yes. Oh, my, what's Archie Fru getting all packed up for? Where does he think he's going? There's something else. It, it's a parcel. Gift rat. Your name's on it, Mrs. Fazzard. Eh? Me? He never remembered my birthday in his life. 
What is it? It's perfume, Mrs. Patterson. That's good stuff, too. It's expensive. Mr. Frew has done you proud. Oh, where on earth would he get money for something like that? And why? Christine, I knew it. There's something far wrong. Hello? Hello? Pyrus, Dan here. Good oh, morning, Daniel. Is all well? The car's gone, Pyrus. The car, Daniel? The one I planked the stuff in, in the car park. It's been tensed. Are you quite certain? Of course, I'm bloody certain. Well, I locked the luggage in the boot last night, as agreed, in the car park, like I said I would, and now some thieving... You, you are positive it has been stolen, not um, taken in error by somebody? Not a chance. Some bastard amateur joyrider has nicked it. Now he's telling about the bidding countries that have stuff in the boot. The, the car was rented, was it not? Of course. Well, there's no chance of it being traced to us, Pyrus. To you, Daniel? Well, to me, then. But I can't very well barge into the local police station and report a theft of a car, can I? Under the circumstances, I think not. <laughs> Daniel, we shall just have to write it off. Look, there are still other fruits of our labours, remember? Ripening. Now, patience, dear boy. Well. Look, I don't have any transport now. There is always British Railways, dear boy. I was wondering, Athelstane, what is the difference between a first-class cabin and an ordinary one? Oh, I shouldn't concern yourself with such things, Michaela. <laughs> if you insist, I am sure you could visit the lower regions sometime during the voyage. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is the best they can offer. Very intimate, too, darling. Oh, where's the bell? I want a newspaper. We can do without the outside world, darling. Just in case there's something about our little uh, northern venture. Daniel. And co. If they knew we had tucked away 130,000 pounds <laughs> via the computer, <laughs> they'd be swimming after the ship. Climbing aboard like rats. <laughs> Ethelstain, mm. I've been playing back our time in the bank. Daniel spent rather a long time in the strong room. I still haven't worked out why. Aline to me. Fabulous. A bit more eager. Great, great. Ah, end of a reel, that'll do. Oh, dear, you can get dressed now. Have you, uh, thought about that trip yet? Oh, I'm keen, Danny. Nice, nice. Uh, about the middle of next month, I was thinking. Drive up north, best of sales. What do you say? Sounds great. Come into money, Danny boy. Well, as a matter of fact, I have a sort of account to collect up north. Big one. <laughs> I'll help you spend it. Couldn't happen to a nicer fellow. I think we shall try the 52 Burgundies tonight, Miss Island. Not that they'll live up to the 59s, of course. Mr. Pines? Yes. Well, oh, thank you. What is it, dear? An invitation from the captain, perhaps. Well, no, no, a telegram. Oh, let me see. on ice. Stop. Eagles. Stop. What on earth does that mean? I asked one of my assistants to keep an eye on the computer transfers. Arrowroot is the name of one of my companies to be credited with the transfer. Yes. On ice. Stop. Eagles. Stop. That on ice means frozen. For some reason, the bank has stopped all its transactions to the company. And eagles are inspectors, investigators, snoopers, and all such gentry who pry into other people's affairs. I see. If they've frozen arrowroot, the chances are the rest is held up as well. Somewhere, something has gone sadly wrong. Hmm. 
You don't suppose the captain would throw us overboard if I diluted this consomme with cognac, do you? Dad. Oh, Christine. Don't go in yet. I'm not going to. What's that? What? I thought... Oh, yeah. Somebody peeping Tom. Here, here. Let go, get off. What's happening? Is that you, Mr. Thru? Oh, it's me. Let go, you. It's Mr. Thru, Dennis. Mrs. Patterson's brother. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, a man can't go up his own path without being assaulted. What do you think you're doing, oh, eh? sorry. Mrs. I... Patterson will be pleased to see you, Mr. Thru. She's been worried about you. Eh? Hey? Oh, is uh, she still up? Oh, yes. She's waited up for the last... Um, well, how long have you been away? A week? Uh, well, uh, I had a wee holiday, you know. You've missed a lot of excitement. Oh, have I? Yes. Dennis's bank was robbed. Yes, and a very clever job it was, too. <laughs> Dennis had his picture in the paper. Uh, what do you mean, uh, his bank? Dennis works in the bank that was robbed, Mr. Flew. Aye. And he's uh, your boyfriend. I'm happy to say. Uh, how long... How long have you been going with him? Oh, um... Six weeks and two days. I haven't worked out the hours. Uh, and he works in the bank. And uh, you live here. And uh, I live here. And... Oh, dear God in heaven. Well, where are you going, Mr. Fru? Oh, jump! He's gone. Christine, either you bring your young man in or I have to buy a plastic soundproof dustbin. Ah, here, Dennis. A letter from the Department of the Environment. Yes, Mr. McCall? As you know, we wrote our customers who deposited items in our strong room for safekeeping and advised them of our transfer to our new branch. Yes. Department of the Environment deny having deposited anything with this. Oh? I check our records and I find that your initials are against the alleged deposit by a Mr. Donald McIntosh of the department. Oh, yes, I remember. A black deed box, it was. Indeed. Yes, I'm sure. I remember. Well, we know you have an excellent memory, Dennis. Everyone remembers that you were the one who spotted that the cover on the computer had been put on the wrong way around after the burglary. Eh? <laughs> yes. Well, the thieves didn't notice. I know, that. I know. You made the point quite clear at the time to us and the newspapers. Hmm. Well, I said, well, you better go and fetch this deed box. Contents unknown. Well, I, I should have a key to open it. So let that be a lesson to you, Briggs. Yes, Sarge. If we hadn't followed up that clue about Miss Richardson not being at home, we'd never have broken this case. No, Sarge. We stopped the computer fraud, recovered the stolen car with the money from the safe, tucked away in the boot, and now we only have to wait for this Macintosh chap to come and collect his deed box, and the whole affair is wrapped up. Do you think he'll come, Sarge? Oh, he'll come all right. He'll come. All these criminal types have a weak spot, you know. He'll not be able to resist it. You'll see. If you say so, sir. That was The Weak Spot by John Lawson. The part of Dan was played by David McHale. Pyrus by Leon Sindon. Michaela and Mike by Eileen McCallum. Archie, Charles Kearney. McCallum, Willie Joss. Dennis, Lawrence Douglas. Elsie, Effie Morrison. Christine, Virginia Stark. Fish. Arthur Boland, James, George Howell. P.C. Briggs, Bruce White. Sergeant Clark, Robert Doherty. Fiona, Wilma Duncan. The producer was Gordon Emsley.